This is Blind Adam of the Awesome Sauce Comics Podcast. I am here with Winston Jordan, good friend of the show. Uh, Triple Dragon Trio, represent. What's up, Jordan? What's up, man? Not much. No, uh, just a lazy Sunday afternoon. Well, yeah, it started out that way, but it hasn't really ended that way. It hasn't really kept going that way. Now all the time stuff's coming up to do, so, you know. Yep. That's is. So, uh... What's new in the world of a uh, triple dragon trio, my friend? Dragon trio. Well, well, we are. Uh, we Michael and I just wrapped our third issue, um, so it, that will actually be out in December, the first week of December. Uh, we are actually currently going into the fourth issue right now. So, so far things are going pretty good. I've got a number of uh, endorsements lined up from. Uh, celebrities, mostly uh, martial artists and martial arts and yeah. that kind of stuff. So we've got a number of uh, endorsements coming up with those people, and they were very gracious and kind enough to to do that for us. So um, other than that, we've got the third issue wrapped up, fourth issue uh, is beginning production next week, and uh, we've got a couple of uh, one shot type deals planned. Um, where we explore the backgrounds of each one of the three guys. Oh, ah, that's sweet. To, yeah, how they came to be where they are and what, how they came to do what they're doing. So. Wow, that is uh, awesome. Uh, so, uh, you know, are you at liberty to say which martial artists are endorsing the book? Or Yeah, actually I am. I'm sure you've seen me probably posted some of it. On social media, uh, we had um, the first one I ever got was uh, Mike Mo, and if you're not familiar with him, he's a uh, he's a martial artist and an actor. He owns uh, Mo's Martial Arts up in uh, Wisconsin, and he's a fantastic martial artist. He is. If you've ever watched the Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, I thought that's who that was. Yeah, and he's the one that plays Ryu, um, and he's just like I said, he's a fantastic martial artist and. Just uh, all around great guy. I've also got a hold of Akira Koyama, who is the um, the the gentleman in the same movie who plays Ken and Ryu's master. So uh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, he he's he's also both of those guys just awesome dudes, man. And they uh, were very gracious about uh, endorsing the book. And let's see, we also have Gerald Okamura. He He's uh, very familiar. A lot of older martial arts film fans are real familiar with him, but I think what he's probably known for the most is he was the guy with the golden six shooters in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. So that's awesome. Yeah, and let's see who else we got. I mean, I've got. A I know you got a uh, tugboat. I'm sorry. I know you. Yeah, you, you, you tweeted that. Yeah, yeah, tugboat, uh, typhoon, however you know him. Uh, his real name's Fred, uh, but he is just a swell guy, and he uh, is actually running his own wrestling school down in Florida, where he's training young wrestlers, and so far it's going really good for him, so. Yeah, um, thanks, thanks, because I just, because his real name slipped, slipped my mind for a second, so thanks for the yeah, correction on that. Yeah, Fred Oppen, yep. Yep. Uh, and let's see, we also wound up getting uh, Z-Ma, and if you, a lot of people... When they first hear that name, they go, who? But the minute you see him, he's like instantly recognizable because he's been in so many films. But I think the uh, thing that he's most known for is if you've ever seen the first Rush Hour, he is the Chinese consulate whose daughter gets kidnapped. So I actually wound up getting a hold of him, and he very graciously agreed to do it as well. So That's awesome. That's awesome. I also want to say I really, really enjoyed the trailer that you guys put out for issue three. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's um, actually going to do a little update to it because when I did, when we did it, we didn't have all of the endorsement photos. Now we do, so I'm actually going to do a little updating to it as the um, as the release date draws a little, draws closer and closer. So. Yeah, I actually think I played. Yeah, that means I'll have to play it again because I know I played it uh, on a somewhere in one of the podcasts. Yeah, and what we did was we actually for the background music, I actually was fortunate enough to have a buddy of mine named Eddie Tyre. He's uh, the guitarist in a band called Surrender the Fall. So 
that's they're act, that's actually their music you hear playing in the trailer. So they were awesome in allowing me to use that. So. That was actually a nice track that they that, that was in the that was in the background of that. That was really sweet. Oh, yeah. That yeah, their their music is just awesome. If if you if you like rock music and you haven't had a chance to check them out, make sure you check them out. They're a really good band. Yeah, I mean they were like I said, I, I actually played the trailer a couple times just to listen to the music. Just to listen to the music, exactly. It's a, it's an awesome track, and it's um I think it's from their I might I might be mistaken, but it's either from their first or second album. I want to say second, but I might be mistaken. But, um, I, it's a fantastic just band all around and like I said all the guys were nice enough to uh, allow me to use that music so you know that's great that that that's awesome uh you know uh it seems that all my buddies from insane comics are doing well yeah so far it's uh picking up pretty pretty good uh one other endorsement we wound up getting we wound up getting william ford who is a master sensei of the kaizen dojo out in california so we wound up getting him. He's done. Some, he's done some acting as well. Uh, he was in um, in the Karate Kid film. So, but what he does now mostly is he uh, runs this dojo and he teaches. Very involved with his students, man. You know, from the from everything I see, they seem to absolutely adore him. So that's pretty cool when you got a sensei that can reach out to that's- his students, and that's you know. So he's a he's a great guy. Um, he also endorsed. So, like I said, I've got some updates to do to the trailer because I've got, I've got uh, endorsement photos that I didn't have when I did the first cut of it. So, and I'll do some updating to it. Like I said, maybe a week or two before the book's release. That's amazing. That uh, that's uh, I'm really happy for you, man. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it, man. I, uh, like I said, man, I just I thank everybody who you and just, and just anybody who is allow me to have any kind of exposure to talk about the projects because in the end man we couldn't do this without exposure and without people out there to buy the products we, we just couldn't do this it would just it would stay a dream you know so. yep in fact I have, to, I have to buy i have to buy some uh you know a bunch of copies of one two three from you oh i appreciate that yeah that's actually what we're i want to talk to my publisher about when the third one comes out uh maybe you know, maybe you get all three in some kind of discounted package deal. If you buy all three of them at one time, you know, if you buy all three issues at one time, maybe you get them for some kind of discounted price. I'll have to talk to them about that, but I think that'd be a pretty sweet idea. So. That that would be awesome. I I also really would like to talk to uh, our since you know, um, I guess I am like official PR for the publisher at times. Uh. You know that he should definitely try to get himself in diamond sometime in the near future. Yeah, he's actually uh, has been talking to us about that. He's been working on that. Um, I understand that thing. He's been a little slow about replying to emails and things like that. He actually just not long suffered a uh, death in his family and the loss of his father. So he's. Oh really? That that's a shame. Yeah. I know he was going through yeah. problems with that, but well. Yeah. So he's uh, he's. I'm sure he's dealing with that right now. So. He's been a little slow about responding to messages and so forth. And, and you know, we, everybody understands that. And of course, our condolences are with him, you know. But um, he has been talking about getting into Diamond within the next um, within the next year or so. Uh, I think for the most part, for a non-Diamond um, endorsed publisher, I think he's very, very insane and very, very successful. Because usually... Publishers who don't go through Diamond don't do very well, but he's uh he's broken that mold pretty much. He's got like I said, he's got probably about now thirty to forty no, probably more than thirty. I probably about forty books on the insane line right now. And it's some so it's some fantastic new ones coming out. There's one from Freedom Fighter. Very uh, government team uh, oriented in origin. I've actually gotta pick that one up myself there's uh my buddy alex Morocco has a great book out called wonder folk and actually i'm actually looking forward to that i actually have to email yeah, alex about yeah, that i've picked it up it's it's a great book it's basically and i'm not going to give away too much of his book but what he does is he takes a real life epidemic like the age and the aids and hiv crisis and he takes that and says what if they were working to find a cure for this disease this epidemic and the 
found the cure in animal DNA. And that's basically where his whole story takes off from there. So it's actually pretty, pretty interesting concept. I actually thought it was a brilliant concept. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to see what issue two brings. So I've already got issue one. I read it about three times since I've had it. So I'm waiting to see what he does with the second one. Yep. Um, you know, uh, and uh, like I said, I... My, my my prayers will be in the will be will be with uh with uh James I you know yeah, yeah, uh, especially yeah, with what's uh been going on with uh right. me and the, it was in, you know it's always difficult to lose somebody especially when you lose them from what I understand rather suddenly so you know, like I said our prayers and thoughts are with him so. exactly yep, so. um so uh what. Like uh, I know you've been real busy, and I'm actually surprised you've uh, you're you're actually putting out the output that you're putting out. Uh, yeah, I, I stay pretty busy. Um, you know, like myself, like most of us, as much as we would love to turn this into the career and then we just wake up every morning and draw comics, it just it's set. the reality of it is it just doesn't happen like that. Probably 95% of us have to go to some type of <laughs> day job, but um, you know, but that's just the way it is. But I would, like I said, I would continue to do it if I weren't making a dime from it. It's what I love to do. Um, in addition to just putting out the work, we've got a couple of um, we've got a couple of projects planned with some guest artists, with some uh, with uh, other studios, and which uh, my character, my the female assassin in the Dragon Trio, who has basically become probably the most popular character in the book, which is. A uh, thrill for me. Uh, um, her character, she will be taking on uh, my buddy Terrence Baker, and you know that's the that's the gentleman that's the founder of the ICC group. <laughs> so um, he and I worked in 2015. He and I worked on a project called The Wind and the Wolf, which brought my female assassin and his female vigilante together in uh, in battle. So that book was a pretty good success. So much so that. Everyone started asking, was there going to be a sequel to it? So that sequel is actually in production, and it's going to have a new three-dimensional art style by DeMont Board, who is the CEO of Dragon Pit Comics. So he's doing the artwork. My creative partner and I, Michael Armstrong, we did the writing. Um, so that's, that's something that's in the works. So people are going to be able to see that these two ladies have more of a history, and it's a little more personal than initially thought. All right, sweet. As long as you don't get uh, Kristen Kruk um, to uh, pl- oh, to uh, play that, that to play be- your uh, female assassin, any live action performance ever, uh, everything will be all good. That was terrible. That I mean, I won't, and my, but see, that has been a problem for years, and I don't know what Hollywood has about what Hollywood has against casting the nationality of a character the way that they are. I mean, let's face it, Chun-Li is not white, she's Chinese. So, and, and they've done that for years and for years, and that's why guys like Bruce Lee was not able to break through until End of the Dragon. Before that, guys like him were not able to break through because Hollywood believed that they did, the public did not want to see Asian actors as leading men or women. And, and, and to a degree, it still exists today. Yeah, hey man, and that's the reason we're getting a uh, a Scarlett Johansson ghost in the show, unfortunately. Right, right. So, I I just think it's a huge injustice. Uh, Actually, uh, the next time I, I I ask for movie suggestions, can you please give me something so I don't have to suffer from live action Street Fighter or um uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. I know, I know. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm so fond of the Street Fighters and the Street Fighter and Fast and Spit. Because it's the first attempt at live action Street Fighter, in my opinion, that went the way it's supposed to be. Um, then, then there's also Mortal Kombat Legacy. I don't know how familiar you are with that. Um, actually, but, I've heard of it. I haven't had a chance to watch any of it yet. Oh, God. You are missing out on that one. That one is probably, again, the best live action interpretation of a video game I've ever seen. Um, they take a much more serious tone on it. And when I say this, say this, a lot of people think, oh, God, they think they're going to get a recap of the Mortal Kombat movies of the 90s. Well, gone is all the techno music and the crappy choreographed fights. This is probably...
probably the most serious version of live Mortal Kombat I've ever seen. And it's got people in it like Michael Jai White, who's a fantastic martial artist, if you're familiar with him at all. Um, Spawn, Kill Bill. Yeah. And um, I actually did not know that he was as fantastic a martial artist as he is until I saw him in another movie called Black Dynamite. And I love that movie. Um, yeah. Me too, man. Blood and Bone, and he's just, he's a fantastic martial artist. He actually played Jack in this Mortal Kombat series. Well, I'm gonna have to check it out, though. Oh, yeah, they, they, they've done season one, they've done season two, and season three, from what I understand, is in the works. And it's the guy that played Shang Tsung in the 90s Mortal Kombat, Terry Tagawa, is actually reprising his role as Shang Tsung in this one, just an older version of it. Ah, sweet. Yeah, and that's a, while I'm on that subject, that's another endorsement I'm attempting to get. I'm just waiting to hear back from him. So, if I could get him, that would be awesome because I've watched him for years, and he's always played a fantastic bad guy. I've watched him in Mortal Kombat. I've seen him in Showdown in Little Tokyo. He's he's always played a great villain, a great bad guy. So, yep. Um, you know what? Um, like I said, uh. You should shoot for the Hardys, too, while you're at it. Because uh, I just caught up on TNA the other day, and I'm now uh, I want it. My, one of my goals for the podcast is to interview Matt Hardy in character. That would be awesome. From what I've understood, he wants to actually buy TNA, doesn't he? From what I've, I've read something to that effect, he's actually interested in buying the entire promotion. I, I've, I've heard that, too, and I don't know if it's him being in character, or I don't know if it was him being serious. Right. With Matt, you, with my, Matt Hardy, I, I suppose you never can tell, but... He seemed pretty serious about wanting to buy the entire promotion. So, you know. Well, they're filming the next couple of episodes right in, right in his uh, compound. Really? Yeah, they're doing uh, that tag team apo- apocalypse. Cool. That's very cool. But I- I'm loving the Matt. I mean, it's yeah. the best thing I've seen in pro wrestling in like 15 years. Oh, God. And that's the thing about it. It has... Do the... And I just hope they trying to restore some of the awesomeness of big wrestling fans back. I mean, it, 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 it's still popular, but it's nothing like it was. The Attitude Era was the time to be a wrestling fan. Man. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, I just think that, I don't know, everybody's all hyped up on this Rock versus Goldberg thing again. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say what everybody else is afraid to. Personally, I'm not that excited about the match. I think it's going to suck. <laughs> they forget that they tried this match 12 years ago. It sucked then. It's going to probably suck now, especially given that these guys are 12 years older. Um, actually, I'm surprised that they wanted to redo the worst WrestleMania, the worst WrestleMania match of all time. All time. That Brock versus, uh, what was that, WrestleMania? That was WrestleMania 20 at Madison Square yeah. Garden. I was in the audience live. It was... It was the worst match ever. I, uh, the, <laughs> that was probably the best part about the whole match was Stone Cold giving both guys a stunner at the end. And, you know, I'm sorry, but not sorry. It sucked. It was a terrible match. And it's probably it's not going to be any better now. I don't know why they think it's going to be better. Sometimes I think the WWE just have a huge, huge habit of thinking we're either stupid or we should just forget the first thing happened. Like, uh, let's see. Perfect example. Uh, we, we, like The Undertaker and Triple H went against each other at WrestleMania three times. Yep. Three times. Now, they only, when they went against each other for the second time, they played it up as, it, if, it, as if it was the first meeting between these two iconic superstars. Uh, let's not forget, they already did, they already went, Undertaker and Triple H already went against each other once in like, WrestleMania 2000. And then they were trying to play it up like, oh, oh forget that. That never happened. Let's do, let's do this. So sometimes I think they have a habit of trying to make us think, oh, uh, yeah, just forget that. That never happened. All <laughs> uh, right. So, now I'm I really not watching much WWE. I'm watching a lot more Ring of Honor, TNA, yeah. Um, yeah. East Coast Wrestling. I've got another buddy who's a pretty big professional wrestling man. He's been telling me that I should really get into that if I'm tired of watching the WWE just gotten where I just, I, you know, it, uh, I don't even know what to say about it anymore. <laughs> Actually, no, I'll give you an example. I get more entertainment out of two hours worth of TNA than I do out of nine hours worth of WWE. WWE and just, uh, yeah, perfect example.
example, the Cody Rhodes, um, Eddie, Eddie Edwards match had a yeah. perfect logical ending to it. They're actually just, they're setting things up nicely. Well, that's good. That's good. I mean, I TNA's female wrestling, they actually have women who can wrestle. Right. And they are not just eye candy, you know? Um... um that's basically what the WWE is. And just and don't get me wrong, there are some gifted female wrestlers in the WWE, but there are a lot of a lot of them are just I can, you know. So it's, yeah. uh, it'd be good that it's good to have a promotion that takes the women's wrestling just as seriously as they do the men, you know. And I'm also want to see you know see one eventually see Billy Corrigan get smacked a few times on live TV. That would be nice. <laughs> You know, uh, and, uh, you know, have you caught any of the, uh, new DC stuff on TV? Uh, I've caught the first, I've watched the first couple episodes of Supergirl. I've seen that, that is phenomenal. And, yeah, I thought it was absolutely great. My one hope is, I just hope that they don't forget that it's her show, not his. Don't I, get me wrong, I think <clears throat> he's great as Superman. He's probably the best Superman I've seen since. Christopher Reeve, to be honest with you. I wasn't, people think I'm, people want to choke me for this one, but I always thought Henry Cavill was just, was just okay, you know? Didn't like um, it, not a fan of it. Yeah, I just, I always just thought he was just rather okay, not phenomenal, but not bad. But, um. The quote the nature boy, I thought he was vanilla. <laughs> Tyler has been probably the best Superman I've seen since Christopher Reeve. That's saying a lot. Actually, I was being nice the other day, and I said I think he was the best since uh, Tom Welling. Since Tom Welling? Yeah. Tom Welling wasn't, wasn't a bad Superman. I mean, I think everybody uh, kind of rags on him, too. And everybody also kind of rags on Brandon Routh, who, you know, was Superman and Superman Returns. He so did a good job. Um, he did a good job, but I think a big part of his problem was, and it's not his fault because he's just playing off the script that he was given, he was practically emulating Christopher Reeve to a team. Yeah, but that's so, what that, that was that whole movie, though. <clears throat> that's the entire movie. So, like I said, it's not really his fault. He's just working with the script that was given to him. But it's just his entire performance was emulating Christopher Reeve. And I guess it, he was meant to do that because that movie's supposed to be a continuation of the Christopher Reeve movies. But yeah. I just think that if he had been given the opportunity to put his own little bits and pieces on it, <clears throat> everybody wouldn't label him as a Christopher Reeve clone. Yeah, Which he's not. And he, actually, I've, I've met him at a couple Wizard Worlds and a couple other conventions. He's a super nice guy. Yeah, he seems like he is. It's just, I just think he got a bit of a bump rap. Uh, and he's having a blast him. playing the Atom. Right, exactly. So that's good, that's good for him that he's broken out of that because I was kind of worried that, you know, everybody's going to look at how bad this movie was and Poor guy's career is going to suffer from it, but so I'm actually glad that isn't happening to him. Nope, nope. Actually, my only complaint with, uh, my only complaint with Supergirl is, like, uh, my girl Kat Grant's leaving. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, um, Kat Grant is not going to be in every episode this season. That's my only complaint. <laughs> yeah, but other than, you know, other than that, that's about... That's about everything that I, you know, that's about the only thing I've caught up on so far, so. Actually, when you get the episode free of Arrow. Yeah. You're going to be surprised. The, the Cody Rhodes episode was awesome. Cool, cool. Without spoiling it, it was like SummerSlam round two. Nice, very nice. Uh, Flash has been decent. Um, and... Luke Cage is probably the best superhero thing I've watched on TV in a while. Very nice. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard about Luke Cage. I haven't seen it yet myself, but my wife has been really watching it, and she's like, oh, my God, you've got to watch this. So um, I think I'll go ahead and I'll sit down and uh, catch up on it because she's like, you, know, you haven't watched this yet? Are you serious? So she's basically going to have me sit down and binge watch it with her again. <laughs> Actually, the show was addicting because uh, I wasn't planning to binge it. 
I finished. That's the first Netflix show I, I actually finished in a weekend. Oh, cool. All right. Well, yeah, they've been um, they've been trying to. They've been and my son's been telling me that it's pretty good too. Sweet. Um. Yeah, it's been great. Uh. And uh. So. And last but not least, just because, you know, people, I think, don't realize that you and I are friends when we're not doing podcasts together, and we actually see each other's Facebook feed, uh, how do we get rid of the terrorist clowns? <laughs> I know. You knew I was going to bring it up. Yeah, this whole clown thing, it's crazy. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's silly. It's silly, and it won't stop, unfortunately, until someone really gets hurt. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, that that and uh, I'm not even gonna bring up the other the other circus. Uh, yeah. Oh, exactly. I'm gonna bring up the other circus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a great movie. Public Enemies, yeah. Public Enemies, where he was elected president, he tried to blame Superman for a murder. Yep. And all of this. And, um, actually, you just gave me a good idea of what I'm going to watch this afternoon, so. <laughs> I may actually, that may, that may be both of us. And we'll yeah. be, I won't have to message you for movie suggestions today. <laughs> yeah, you just gave me a good idea of what I'm going to watch. I actually have uh, a pretty extensive DC animated library, so. I think I'll be watching that movie. Exactly. Actually, I'll give you another suggestion on DC animated, um, because it's only available on digital to November 1st. Batman Return yeah. of the Cape Crusaders is amazing. I'll have to check that one out. It's the new Adam Westbert Ward Julie Newmar voiced one. Oh, cool. Set in the, in the 1966 continuity. It is phenomenal. Man, I'll have to check that out. I will have to definitely check that one out because I like all things Batman. That's just me. I've been a Batman fan since, God, probably I was five or six years old. <laughs> yeah, same here. You know, uh, but... If you're a fan of the 66 TV show, this animated thing is just like a new episode. Yeah, I was, that's actually what my first exposure to Batman was. I didn't learn that he was the serious, dark, evil, the serious, dark, terrifying character until the 1989 movie came out along with Frank Miller's Dark Knight. Yep. Um. That was the first time I learned that he was that he was really meant, he's meant to be this serious, terrifying figure of the night, you know. So, my, the '66 show was actually my first exposure to anything Batman. Yep, same here, and uh, you know, uh, you know, like I said, this animated movie is just beautiful. Uh, that's, another, that's another endorsement I'm gonna try to grab. I'm actually. Uh, Actually, so am I, man. Uh, you know, the, you know the easiest way to get to Bert. What's that? Don't talk anything, Batman. Talk to him about dogs. Talk to him about dogs. Yeah, he owns a dog shelter. Really? Yeah, his whole thing is like uh, rescue dogs. Yeah, I've seen that. I think I've seen that on his page. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a, that. Like, if you're at a comic book convention and you see him, he he he'll show pictures of his dog. To anyone who, to anyone who will listen to him. Yeah. So that's just like a, you know, just the 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 key to his heart is uh, through his dogs. Well, you know, and I figure that it's gotta be, it's gotta be a, um, I, I won't say annoying, but it's gotta be. Sometimes, it, you know, people remember him for the most part as being the the first flesh and blood drop, and that's that's yeah. fine. But I'm sure at times that's not it. That's not the only thing he wants to talk about. If he meets a fan, I'm sure that's not the only thing he wants to talk about. I'm sure it, it probably gets under his skin sometimes. So. You know? Nah, he he's a he's a he's a really nice guy though. Um, yeah. From the interactions I've had with him. Yeah, I haven't talked with him personally, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna, you know I'm, I'm friends with him and I've recent I've very briefly messaged back and forth with him. So. Uh, Understand that, man. Not a problem. So, uh, you know, are you gonna be doing any conventions to promote the book anytime soon? Uh, yeah, actually, I am. I was trying to get into the Memphis Comic Con some time ago, but you know, you have to get into the, you have to apply for that one. The one that went on, that's going on over this weekend, mm-hmm. you have to apply for that one pretty early. But I'm gonna be going to uh, the next one that's coming up here in March. Uh, I've already actually start my vendor application, so hopefully I'll get approved, and uh, I can actually start uh, attending the event, uh, this next convention as a vendor, rather than just going as a guest, you know? Sweet. So, yeah, I'm going to be 
Yeah, we're working on it. That's the uh, other thing that I figure that you can't do this business and not hit the convention scene. So you gotta, you definitely gotta hit the convention scene. So I want to, I told my partner that we gotta get much more active with that. So. Yeah, my, my advice is just start local and then just start brushing out. Yeah. You know, and then you can get to, and then you can build up to the insanity of, like, New York Comic Con and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're working on going to the very next one to hit that, this the very next big one, so. Nice. All right, man, as always, I, I really want to say, uh, you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for supporting the podcast, and thank you for being my friend, man. Dude, no problem, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Anytime, man. Just let me, just give me a few days notice anytime. Yeah, hey, same here, man. You always have a, a, a open invitation to uh, come on and uh, plug and uh, talk uh, comics and pop culture anytime you want, man. Fantastic, dude. Hey, thanks, Adam. I appreciate it, bud. Same here, man. Take care. Take picture. Stop, re- stop recording video.